All right. So it's we have a radical, and we have a radical with uh, two extra terms on here. So we got some fun stuff to do. Now, I remember when I was uh, first learning my times tables, I don't know why um, I had to do this, but for some reason, I just always, my mom made sure I always remembered, you know, one times one, two times two, three times three, four times four. And the easiest thing, I, for some reason, I always just went all the way up to 12. And 144 is always stuck with me. So I always remember that 144 um, is, is 12 squared. So the square root of 144 is gonna be 12. So I apologize, there's a lot of different ways you guys can you know, fax it out, but when you take a look at the square root, I know that the square root of 144 is 12. You could also look at you know, uh, uh, you know, factoring this and you'd get you know, your 12 times 12. So first thing I'm gonna look at is, I can take the square root of 144 and I know that's 12. Now, here comes my hard part. I have x to the fourth and y cubed. So how am I going to go and simplify this to you know, get some values, um, get these radicals out? How do you take the square root of x to the fourth and the square root of y cubed? Well, a couple things I want you to remember. If I say the square root of four, I know that equals two. The reason why is two times two, well, four equals two times two. Because remember, what the square root says is what two numbers multiply to give me my radicand or my number inside the root root. So it's two times two. So if I said the square root of you know, x squared, we know um, that answer is, well, yeah, we know the square root of x squared is gonna give me x. What's happening is that these two are canceling out. So if I, um, if I'm taking a look at something and I have some, some numbers that are larger than two, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to wanna to replace these with as many x squared as possible. So a quick little exponent tip, x squared times x gives you x cubed, and x squared times x squared gives you x to the fourth. Remember you add the exponents, there's not a one that, we don't usually write the one there, but there is a secret one uh, when it's a derivative x. So what I'm going to want to do is, since I know that the square root of something squared equals the radicand, I'm going to want to try to get as many x squareds or y squareds as I can. So I'm going to rewrite this as 12 times the square root of x squared times x squared. And then this, y cubed, I can write as y squared times y. Then, using my rule that the square root of x squared equals x, I know that um, I'm going to actually split these all up. So I'm going to write 12 times the square root of x squared times the square root of x squared times y, square root of y squared times the square root of y. And that's your rules of your roots that you know that if you're taking the square root of something and everything inside there is multiplied by each other, you can actually just split that up. So now, the reason why I did this, because I want to show you how it's easy to cancel out. Those two all cancel out to give me 12. That becomes x, that becomes x. These cancel out to give me y, and then I can't cancel anything out with this, so it's still gonna be root y. So the final answer would be 12 x squared times y over your radical, um, radical y. So that's how you uh, simplify uh, when given variables under your radical.